Hello, it's Sunday, it's sunny outside, so what better thing to do than stay inside and play some board games? Yes. <laughs> this is We're Not Wizards. Um, my name's Richard, and as usual, I'm joined by my tactical pixel man, Colin. Hello. Hello, everybody. And this episode is titled The Heavy Pixels Strikes Back, because it's episode five. Of nine. Is, is, is that a, a reference? It's a me? potential Star Wars reference, oh. potentially. But um, so so the, just like Star Wars, there are going to be nine episodes now. Nine. 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 And uh, number seven is going to be a remaster of four. Well, I, I wondered why this city was all ripped up. So you've obviously <laughs> you found the, late, the loose change. I have. For, for I've more done episodes. it. I have done it. I have done it. And also, I've now got a bit of a pain in my back because I'm... Um, well, I'm not missing a, a kidney, but I just strain my back, try to find the loose change. <laughs> so, um, yes, we are, we are not wizards. Now, the reason that we do this is, as we've said before, and it's becoming a catchphrase. Well, it's going to become a catchphrase when more than 10 people say it. There's, um, We're doing this because there's never enough podcasts about uh, board games. No, no, there's not. I, I looked. I couldn't find any. It's and uh, the other thing is that there's... There's, there's definitely not enough chaps do, doing these just things two guys know. especially two guys so um we're um let's just let's just dive in okay let's leave the shout outs to the back oh push them to the back push it. we're reformatting Ooh. five episodes in we're already <laughs> we're already for we're doing a lucas <laughs> except we're not going back and changing it we'll try and edit it later on um, Does that mean I get to shoot first now? You can if you me? want to, but do you want to? <laughs> that sounds a bit, sounds a bit Star Warsy. Um, playing what we've been playing. What have you been playing? Let's start off with your good self. Or what have we been playing? We've been playing lots. We have, um, haven't we? We've got yeah, through a, an, a, a pile, barrel, barrel of games. A barrel. Yes. I like <laughs> that. Like a barrel of monkeys, except more mischievous. Um, I've been playing Pokemon again because yeah. I brought a, I brought my boy. Well, you, you have a child. So I have a child, explained. so yeah. I have I have a child. So I brought him along to the club on Friday, not the dance disco club, but the board game club. Yep. And he played Pokemon, and uh, we had a game, and he played Stu. Yes. Yeah. And How he, did and he get on? He beat Stu. <laughs> Did he? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, all that magic the gathering is obviously <laughs> taking its toll on him. And yeah, my son bested Stu, um, took all his six reward cards and uh, defeated his Pokemon. Oh so that you know, so that was that was quite good. Um so that was good fun. Um obviously one of the things we mentioned last week we've got our little get what we got to the table. Yes. So yeah. um I've been and you and me have been um, getting a bit kind of 8-bitty and 16-bitty. Yep. And yeah. we've been playing a game called Pixel Tactics. Mm. Now, uh, Pixel is... Tactics, um, level 99 games, uh, you can... Well, they've, they've you can uh, find them on Twitter at, at level 99 games. Yep. Um, do you want to tell the people about Pixel Tactics? Yeah, it's um, it's a card game. Um, where you, it's a two-player card game, so it's it's you against your opponent, and uh, you have your deck of cards. Both people have the exact same deck of cards, and uh, you get issue. You know, at the very beginning, you take five cards and you look at them and you go and you decide who you want to be your champion. Yes, and uh, he is then like the leader of your team, and. Every single card has a different champion on it, and each deck of cards is uh, I think it's uh, forty cards each. That's a decent size. Yeah, that is a decent um, deck. I could be utterly wrong there. You but. could be. But we'll collect it. We'll correct it in the show notes, and we'll be asking for your apologies as well. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, the artwork. Oh uh, yes, yeah. The, the, the main, yeah, the, yeah. The, one of the reasons I, I kind of like it. Well, you mm. know I'm arty, yeah, farty, yeah. maybe more arty. It's it's because it's it's based on trying to recreate the sort of um, like Japanese role playing computer game. Yeah, you know, 
hence the name Pixel Tactics. Yeah. It's, it's that sort of... Super Nintendo, Super Mega Nintendo, Drive... Yeah, Mega Drive Kind era. of era of, yeah. like, kind of pixely little games and stuff like that. Your secret of manas of this world that... Yep. You know, your final fantasies and stuff like that. So it's it's very... Um, it's, it's pixely looking. Yeah. Pretty much. And everything is designed pixely. Yep. So yep. it's not a surprise. It's called... Pixel tactics, tactics, really. Yeah. So that it, all the yeah. tokens and and all the um all the card art is all you know got that sort of eight bit sixteen bit graphics. It's it's like ooh. it reminded <laughs> me um of almost like a, a quite card related kind of super dungeon explore. If you've ever seen that, it's the same. Mm. You know, it's a kind of an artwork kind of a, it's based you know little tokens are a little bit kind of video gamey and stuff like that well, I, uh, would, yeah, I, yeah. I would describe it you know like like your early um you know nes games yeah so, so like yeah. zelda or you know um final fantasies the, the the original ones of them before they went all 3d and level 99 they've gone they've gone they have basically been given the creative team unlimited coffee and locked them yes, in the room yes, because the, the amount of stuff they've done for oh, that game the number of characters yeah. is, is, is great you know it's like give somebody here give some it's like they've given an infinite number of illustrators mm. an infinite number of pencils and said right we want 8 bit and 16 bit characters well, yeah, and, the, and the range of characters you get in the game is it's, ridiculous it's expanded it immensely I've got um, I've got the deluxe version of the game and I've also got um, the base set too, so that gives me a huge amount of stuff I can do. But in the in the deluxe version, it comes with every other hero in the game as a special coloured drawing. Yes. So, so you know, like a proper, you know, they're called HD cards because they're in high resolution. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it's quite um it's obviously it's a self aware game. It's a very aware of the kind of um the genre. Yeah. Uh, of uh, of kind of pop pop culture, it's trying it's trying to hit. Um, you basically it's it doesn't take up an awful lot of space. You have a play mat. No, um, um, the, the 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 play sort of zone is six, um, a three by three yeah. um, on your side and three cards by three cards on on their side. So that's all the space the game takes up. It's, yeah. You're not needing a massive amount of room to play. No, you you need maybe a little bit of extra space to stick the mm. stick the tokens down. Yeah, yeah. that's about you know and that's have, have that's the deck kind of to the side it. and, yeah, and yeah. your discard pile, and that is it. So yeah. I played it for the first. I played it for the first time. Um, as you know, you've obviously you've it's yours. So you've you've yeah, played it yeah, a few I've... times yourself. Um, in terms of, it's one of these games. In terms of. No learning how to play it. Hmm. It is very easy. It's relatively quite easy to learn. Yeah. Um, it's like it wasn't very. You know, they've streamlined the their rules that they give you an awful lot. It's yeah. it's you know a two sides A four. Yeah. And, and you know when you take off all the graphics, it would probably be less than that, and and that teaches you how to play and shows you everything you need to know. But it's just. You know, um, it's a like few niggly things in it, but you get that with absolute everything. Yeah, I mean, again. there's always there's always a chance that with so many character cards that have different kind of skill sets and stuff like yep. that, there's always a way that that things can can be a little bit kind mm-hmm. of oh, but it how the game plays because we're we're kind of maybe yeah getting we've, ahead we've, we've 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 jumped on to how it looks and, and if now you can we should actually tell you. If what you, the game's like. <laughs> if you can imagine, on a, if you've got like a nine by nine grid, a th- no, no, sorry, a nine a nine square grid, three by three, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nine spaces. Three, but yeah. but you've got a top <laughs> line, a middle line, and an end line. Yeah. And the way the game works is that you basically you take turns and you play cards from that particular yep. line, and then you and then you play the second line and then you play the final yep. line. Uh, but the interesting thing is each character card has got a line to say what you do if it's sitting in that particular yep. row. So it's talk about analysis paralysis. Kick, yes, yeah, because you, you've got your hand of, of cards. Yes. You, you've only got um, two actions per turn. Yeah. So 
you know, and one action is to draw cards. So if you want more cards in your hand, that's one of your actions. Yeah. Uh, if you want to attack with a chappy, that's an action. Yeah. If you want to use one of the cards, because not only do you have where you position them on on the board. Yes. You are. You can also um, use the actual card as a spell. So if if you've got a card in your hand, you like grave digger he's he's not going to be any good to me in the front rank and we're playing in the front rank but if i play him now as a spell card because you know there's four options on each card of, yeah. of what to do with yeah. them um then you know you're unlocking all these extra abilities as well yeah and you've so. got like traps you can place down but it's almost a case of you know a guy that's at the front rank could be an all-out kind of he could be the guy that kind of adds an adds an additional tack strength to everybody yep. around him. Yeah. In the middle rank, he could be the the guy that provides defense to people around him. Yep. On the third rank, he could be the guy at the back that's able to launch kind of projectiles exactly, at kind yeah. of other people. So you start off thinking it's like it's like you start off right okay. Of this guy's, you start off. You put the cards in the row, and you're almost kind of saying, "Okay, I've put these cards in the row. What can I do?" Yeah. And it t it takes a little while for you to say, "Actually, I'm going to play this card and make sure I put it in the second row because mm -hmm. I know I can then use this skill, yep. and then um, I can play or I can play them in the third row, and I could be using kind of that skill yeah. instead. So it's very very easy to pick up, mm. but then you get the kind of the once, chain yeah. things once once you're sort of understanding oh right okay these abilities all segue off of each other you know when i, I played you I, I managed to get two of my characters in this perfect position one was um in the second rank and the other one was in the third rank yeah and the one in the second rank could remove damage off of any other character yes and then the one on the third rank i hated them <laughs> yeah. I just like, I was gonna call in. What's that behind you in the card? <laughs> Grab the card and just throw it somewhere else. And then the one in the third rank could remove all the damage. Oh. Off of so I was able to to keep my 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 front rank guys alive. Um, but your champion himself, because all the mm. champions, they when they're up when they're facing their champion kind of um, orientation, yep. they have like a special move. So your guy's special move was basically to say, well, if you attack this guy, he reduces his damage, his damage down to one. one. Yeah. And um, basically, if you've got guys in the front row, they cover the guys behind them. Yep. And the guys in the second row cover the guys behind them. Yep. So you but you can use ranged attacks to kind of hit to the guys. Jump over. Jump over, if. like if you're like firing an arrow or something like that in, yep. in kind of other games. Um, I, it caught. I could see people looking at this and going, this is grossly complicated because yep. when you look at the cards, the cards have obviously, they're not huge size. No, they're, they're, they're you know, they're, they're a deck, you know, normal card yeah. size. Yeah, you know. they're normal card size, but they contain a hell of a lot of information. There's an awful yep. lot of information on there. Yeah. And it's... Um, it's in text and yes. it's in picture format yes. as well. Yes. Yeah, so it's pictorially it's kind of represented, so you can, you can kind of have a look. But with anything, obviously, when you first look at it, you're like, I have no idea what these pictures yep. mean, and you have to rely <laughs> on the text. It's only later on. What, what does a skull do. mean? <laughs> I know. Does that mean? What does a heart mean? What does that do? What does plus two mean? I mean, totally. I think you spend you spend maybe five ten minutes admiring the artwork and going, this is quite awesome. Yep. And then you spend ten minutes trying to decide where to put the card. Yep. And then you and spend. And it's all really super important because the game hinges on you putting it in the right I know. spot. I know. But if you don't put it, you're like you get like me. You get absolutely slaughtered. Yeah, that was a wee bit unfair. I've, I've, I've played play? the game twice before I played you. Adam. No, no, I know, I know, I know. But at the same time, I know. But um, in terms of maybe learning how to get a basic game, yeah, I mean you'll be able to pick it up and play it. Is it going to be for everybody? Nope. It, I think that it's not just a case of... I think if you're used to playing a card... If you're used to, say, playing Magic, if you're used to playing Pokemon, 
if you're used to playing like even say something like say Ashes, yeah. Rise of the Phoenix Born, where your character's abilities are a singular ability. Yeah. So you know you know that for instance you know that you know you know that when you play Mewtwo or you know that when you play Meowth or you know you know you're going to be getting this certain ability. Mm-hmm. With Pixel Tactics, it kind of opens it up so yeah. a single. I mean, a single card can have as many as maybe he's got five. four. Five, he's yeah, got four potentially, options. Potentially of what five you do with if him. he's a trap. Because yeah. that was one of the things where I was able to learn like lay a card at the side, and what happens is it's almost a case of if call if Colin carried out an action and used a magic projectile attack on me, and I was instantly able to flip the card and say, yep. right, okay, um, I've deflected that. I've basically knocked you out of the game. Yeah. You know, knocked that character out of the game. Um, so it may be for people that are wanting, that are maybe used to that kind of quick mm, one ability mm, card yep. kind of game, might struggle at the beginning. Well, we we found, you know, playing at the club, we found one of the big magic players absolutely detested it. Yes. He he, he was having none of it. And, yeah, um, you can't have all he, these abilities. He, he really didn't enjoy the game. Give me my forest. <laughs> Yeah, give me, but, give me but, my planes of calm. Ooh. <laughs> ooh. Uh, where's my black lotus? Ah, it's oh. under the coaster again. Oh, no. See, that's it. You can tell. You can tell. <laughs> I, I, that's the only card I know yes. in Magic, yeah, and it's, yeah, the card, it's the only card. only card everybody knows. It's because it's worth so much. Drop to some <laughs> random, random, random person waiting in the post office. Like the pensioner collecting mm. a bit, which they don't collect the pension for the week, but getting their books of stamps and going. You played um, Magic the Gathering, love. <laughs> oh, that'll be the Black Lotus then. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only card that everybody, everybody's guaranteed to have heard of. Um, if, if you've even ever heard of Magic. <laughs> yeah, if you have. But if you're listening to this, and if you've not heard of Magic, well, welcome. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what we're here. We're not going to turn you away. Magic is uh, just a card game. Magic yes, the Gathering. Card game. Massive card game. It's not game. as good as Pixel Tag. It's... <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Bring it on, fanboys. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, of course, the other thing that we look at is it's all very... I mean, it looks fantastic. I yeah. really, really like it, but I'm, as I say, a Marty. It plays the level... When I finished the game, mm. it didn't put me off the fact that you kind of wiped the floor. I understood why you had beaten me. Yeah. And so it made me think, right, okay, well, if you've beaten me, I, you know, there's no reason why I can't get back up and, and kind of learn for the next time. And I was already going to be thinking about the kind of the, the potentially, you know, well, how would I play it differently? How would yep. I do it? Card placement's really important. Oh, ridiculously, ridiculously so, important in the you game, know. yeah. Um, is it worth it, though? I mean, how, I mean, I've seen it for, we were having a conversation during well. the week because I got to the point where I was thinking of maybe picking it up. Because you can get it for about twenty five to no, thirty. No, it's pounds cheaper than that, Richard. Yeah. What you were looking at is the deluxe version. That is But if I'm going anywhere, I'm going yeah, deluxe. Well, it's, I'm Tesco's finest here. <laughs> I would get Marks and Spencer's coal slot over <laughs> anything else. Okay. What? You 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 middle okay, class I'm, person I'm you. not middle class because I like because <laughs> I like coleslaw Aldi's is good enough for me well you can have Aldi's and you can take it but they don't do coleslaw it's rubbish well they do do coleslaw but it's not as nice as te- Tesco I'll let I can get okay. away with Tesco's finest but Marks and Spencer's is just I don't know what they do they must get angels to whip okay <laughs> alright no, but anyway anywho <laughs> welcome to We're Not Coleslaw uh, yes um <laughs> no, the, the the deluxe box. Um, basically, it's a really big box, and it's designed so that you can put everything they've released for the game into the one box. Mm-hmm. So you, you're basically you're paying ten pound more. Yeah. For the big box. Yeah. And I've, I've, a couple really really sexy dividers for the which box. are full plastic, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. And the box is a decent size. Yeah. And it's, it's not a it's flat. Like it's a really. It's a tall one. It's is really tall. It's really really thick, so it's not going to get crushed or anything. It's it's quite a good box. We actually went go. we went outside and we <laughs> we played a bit of football afterwards yeah. just to get rid of the you know, the kind of the obvious kind of the the tension that was building up through the fight of you know. So we went out and kind of really 
kicked it about a bit, and it was f- we didn't kick it about a bit, did we? Look no. at your face. <laughs> You're not kicking me. This, no. <laughs> no. this is this is microphone gate all over again. <laughs> we're not we're not joking about this. No, no. <laughs> no. There's a potential that if I keep on going, no. So the, <laughs> there's five base sets. Yes. Um, How much do they go for? They go for eleven pound. I mean, I mean, you're that looking, is the full game for eleven pounds. That is, uh, basically looking at it this way, that is uh, f- two fried rice, a prawn crackers, yeah, a Hong Kong, uh, a Hong Kong style uh, yeah, sweet it's, and sour it's a chicken. It's a carry-on meal for one. It yeah. is for two. Uh, I was gonna say. Well, that's you know, why I'm overweight. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not been to the the Wan Lam? They do, they can do no. that two for no. no All right, it's, it's fine. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, the the, um, the the there's five base sets out and and they each have a slightly different theme of of yeah. how the heroes of that set work so you do kind of want them all you don't need to get them all though um, and you can play you know quite happily you know I, I've got hours of play waiting in just the deluxe box that I got just need to get yeah. more people playing well you know. You're thinking of buying it. Yes. Another guy at the club's bought it. Yes. A couple of the other guys at the club were like interested in this. For, I mean, for £11 so, pound to jump on board. Yeah. That's and that's nothing. all that's you nothing. need to, to, that's to, all to you get need you to play. play. And, and that'll get you playing two people. Yeah. It's not just like you'll get one deck and then you'll need to get another no, it's, deck. No, it's enough for two people yeah. to play the game. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. So pretty good. So yeah, so what we say is um, give it a shot. I... I I really liked it. Heartily recommend it. I th- um, the depth of play that you can get yeah. kind of maybe supersedes. No game's ever going to be the same either because yeah, because you'll be just wanting to. Many oh, I can only do one ability on everything else, but in Pixel Tactics, I can do four. No, you can't. You can't. Well, well, you, you can. can yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't. Okay, so yeah, um, pick it up. It's certainly worthwhile. Um, Certainly worthwhile, we think, kind of getting from all good retailers. Well, yeah, everywhere, everywhere online's got it. You probably won't be able to find Pixel Tactics One. That's um, sold out basically everywhere. Um, that's good. But two, three, four, and five are all easily in stock. Uh, cool. Everywhere I've looked. Good. The next game that we said we were going to get to the table um, was Heavy Steam. Heavy Steam, yes. By Greenbrier Games. Now, um, you can find them on, uh, I think it's at Greenbrier Games um, on Twitter. Um, <clears throat> we introduced this briefly. We've, I, this is another game that I've been bringing to the club for goodness knows how long. I think it was, I think I got it, maybe got it round about the time mm-hmm. that Forge War came out. Yep. Forge War, <laughs> singular still. Forge War, yes. Yes. Yeah. Heavy Steam is like a, a considered skirmish kind of game. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by considered is that um, you have, you're basically fighting off two massive mechanical behemoths of steam against each other. It's very much a kind of a... So it's just a two-player then, is it? Or You can bring in other people because uh-huh. you, you've got the option to bring in kind of um, more than... You could essentially, you could have four players. Right. Okay. And everybody controls a mechanoid. Yeah. But they'd have I, to team I didn't up. actually play with you, so you'll no, have to No, I played it to me. with... Um, yeah, I played with one of the other guys at the club because um, he had been... He sounded very interested in it for a yeah. while, and I think you were frost graving. I was, unfortunately. How are you doing in that? Just as a quick aside, yeah. <laughs> you're still destroying it. Yeah. Has Fraser kind of get forgiven you yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, he has. He's he's remarkably resilient at at, at getting hammered. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but hang on, there's not an achievement on this guidebook for making somebody cry. No, but no. Colin's working on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, steam achievements. Actually. Exactly. Yeah. Um, heavy steam. First of all, um, the you start the, the actual game board's really really small. It's probably a, maybe about a quarter of the size as you would expect on a normal kind of reasonable size kind of 
game board. Um, just because you don't have a lot of, um, you don't need to have a lot of stuff oh, actually okay. on the plane. It, but it what looked the, as though you'd taken up a, a bit of space. We had taken up a bit of space because every single miniature has its own kind of steam diagram. Now this is what right. I'm saying. Mm-hmm. This is when I'm saying it's like considered, because normal games are. I've got a big hunking robot. I'm yeah. going to move them over there. Uh-huh. I'm going to fire these missiles. Use this gun. And I'm gonna then, you know, scope out. Um, I'm gonna burn down this terrain so I can like stop the cover and everything like that. Steam, uh, heavy steam, is all about. Well, I've got a source of power which is my steam. If I want to move forward, mm-hmm. I've got to move steam into my legs to make it work. If I want to, um, if I want to buy like an ability card, I've got to move steam up into the command center to. To buy stuff, and mm-hmm. then if I've got, um, if I want to fire my guns, I've got to use a put a certain amount of steam into those various areas in order to make them shoot and and destroy yeah. and stuff like that. You're at the end of the, basically the idea is you, you've got to manage what you're doing with your steam, because if you if you build up too much steam or if you use try and use too much steam at once mm-hmm. then you you've got a central kind of you've got a central kind of overflow point right and it as you are using your weapons your overflow or you you you're you you're almost like got a boiler the more uh-huh. steam that's yeah. in there the more you've got a chance of an over of basically you're overloading and overheating but it affects your defense right okay so if i for instance if i um the round basically works that you you start off and you um, you basically make a movement if you want to. If you've got steam in your legs, you can move. Mm-hmm. After that, you can then go ahead and attack. So if you've decided if um, and after you attack, you then decide to then move steam about the diagrams. Now the steam is represented by little white cubes. Yeah. So you get a finite resource of mm-hmm. these little steam cubes. Every single kind of, um, every single kind of like uh, you know steampunk mech has a certain number of cubes. Um, if you move, you know, if you decided to move and fire both your guns at the same yeah. time, you're going to end up with quite a considerable amount of steam going into your your kind of your overload bay, uh-huh. and that'll effectively could remove your, you know, reduce your defense. Right. Okay. Now then, um, you basically you then you then have no choice but to push kind of like the steam throughout your kind of, I guess, dreadnought, you'd maybe call it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the stuff that you, that you then replenish steam from another section, which is a boiler, yeah. and that boiler moves into your central point and that kind of refills you. But then you're only allowed to move a certain amount of steam out of your kind of overheating part back yeah. into the main boiler. It sounds complicated as hell yeah, not really but um, <clears throat> it took a it's little not, while to pick up city panic is it no yeah. <laughs> oops yeah. yeah let's not do that um, but um, it's get. I think it's another one of these things that the rule book is a reasonable size rule book yeah um, and then but then obviously you know Playing it kind of practically is is kind of interesting. You get yourself into a little bit of a into a little bit of a rhythm. Uh-huh. The interesting thing is, if you're getting attacked or yeah. if you take damage, mm-hmm. then what happens is the 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 white cubes in certain areas get you get your shields. You got shields. You right. take off your shields, and then once your shields have gone, you start to take direct damage okay. on your on your uh, kind of your your dreadnought your your um, your your mechanoid basically yeah, your, yeah? Your, your. um if you take enough damage then you get to a point where you get you, if you take enough damage you start to get kind of like red cubes mm-hmm. and red cubes are bad news because they replace the white cubes they go into the boiler but you you've lost those white cubes forever right, you can't okay. get those back uh-huh. so you're essentially reducing the resource if you essentially have if you essentially have enough damage in a certain point, 
it stops the scheme the steam from being able to travel about Ooh. the various parts of the yeah. mechanoid. Okay. If you get enough damage when it reaches a point where it's you know, there isn't any more kind of damage you can take, you can almost you can essentially put an entire limb out of commission. Yeah. And you can also get to the point where you've got enough damage on it to to basically mm-hmm. kind of destroy it. Yeah. Um, so you're saying it's it's so that's how the damage works. But um, you know, are all the robots the same? Or no, no. no this is the thing. This is not. It's asymmetrical. Then is it? Yeah, it's Gre- I know. mean, Greenbrier of Greenbrier of of um, they ran this on um, they ran this on a Kickstarter. And part of what they did is they took on, they designed um, lots of weapons. Yeah. So you got lots of weapons that take different amounts of damage yeah. and need different amounts of steam. You get different grades of um, mechanoids. So you get um, kind of almost like light infantry. You get um, the heavy ones. Now, as an example of one of the heavy ones, um, it's got like steam trains, yeah. steam engines mm-hmm. for like its That's power. Cool. Oh, so the right. entire robot is set upon two, two steam, steam trains. trains yeah. So graphically, it looks striking. The miniatures are interesting because they're not um, they're not um, resin and they're not plastic. They're like almost a very very semi dense kind of rubber. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. So they've got a, a ve- they've got a very unusual feel. Yeah. But also the reason for that is because you can interchange you can take off the mm-hmm. weapons yeah. so when you set up your mat so when you set up your mech you've not only got like your little mech to go but you've also got little weapons you can add on oh, and okay. then you can add on right. you can change the weapon cards that are on the board so part of the game is picking your mech at yeah the beginning, p- part of the game pick, is like you know it, yeah as you yeah. go you can build you know part part of the game is at the beginning you decide right this is my mech these are the weapons i'm going to use and you also have a pilot Right, okay. Now, the pilots all... There are two sides. It is basically, like... It is basically Britain versus Germany in, like, a world war, ah, essentially. Okay. So, right. you know, you've got one with a British flag. You've got one, um, you know, a German symbol on it. Um, not the SWAT sticker. <laughs> I'll just point that out. Um, but, yeah, so these pilots, they all have different abilities as well. Oh, okay, right. So, so for instance, right. a pilot might be able to use something for an less amount. He might be able to gain defence if he's in certain terrain. Because mm-hmm. um, one of the other things you get to do is, and this is where you have to really decide what you're doing on a, a kind of a resource basis, is you can decide to move your steam into your command centre. Yeah. If you do that, there's a part of the game, part of the turn is, you're able to buy kind of special ability cards. Yeah. Now these ability cards allow you to maybe have um, ground troops, or right. you can have okay. a tiny little mechanoid, another mm-hmm. little mechanoid yeah. to bring on, like a gunnery time. Um, you might be able to buy, say, like terrain. So if you um, if you're on, say, like you can buy a plane, as in a plane. P-L-A-I-N as in a plane for field of crops and stuff like that so it's nice and flat that means you can easily move but it doesn't cost you any movement points because it's flat so how does the map normally get built? you're talking about you have to buy it's just flat it's normally just flat flat. you can buy terrain cards to change the terrain you're currently in right okay to affect where you're standing so you might decide you're you know you're bought um, you bought terrain that's got old farm buildings on it so mm-hmm. what that does is that protects you from damage, but allows you know it helps you it helps you in your defence. Right. You might buy um, a terrain thing that puts you up on the hill. Mm-hmm. Now what that does is that obviously increases that can increase the range, the range that you can fire. Got, yeah. But it obviously decreases the defence. Yeah. It decreases the mm-hmm. defence that you have. Also, the pilot cars they also have like a special ability that they can mm-hmm. use as they always do once per game special yeah. ability. Um, so taking into account kind of like the different, the different weapons, the different mechs, the different um, the different guns that you can have, um, there are some scenarios including in the game. Um, it gets quite tense right. because you're at the situation where you you you're planning your attack and you're saying okay. 
in this round, I need to move... You know, you, when you're reassigning your steam, you're assigning your steam to say, right, I'm going to move this into the guns. And then, okay, well, let's do that. But then you realise that actually what you needed to do, a card that's come up that you really want has come mm -hmm. up, so I should move it into the command centre. Yeah. Or do I move it back into this right arm and move it into the shield thing to give myself more shield, you know, yeah. to give myself shields? Um, and then what can happen is somebody can just, your opponent can come along and say, can score a direct hit on your arm or a direct hit on your leg, and that's you got to reconsider your kind of options. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can follow the scenarios, but you can um, the weight, you know, the depth, the potential depth of play and and how you play. And I played it, I played it a good a good couple of times with Gordon, and no two games were. So how long the does a, a game take? That's the thing. The game does take about. I mean, we were when we played the first match that we played. It lasted the whole kind of three hours, just to right. set it up and get it going and to learn what we're meant to be doing. You can get it down easily into maybe sixty minutes. Right. Well, that, that's the thing we forgot to say about pixel pixel tactics of yeah. um, game times. Twenty minutes. Well, Twenty minutes. Twenty to minutes. Forty minutes. Yeah. To, depending on. Yeah. yeah exactly analysis paralysis which I ended up getting <laughs> big time I ended up getting big you were time. knackered when we played so it yeah was that like, was oh, yeah I know like that half was past a, 11 at night yeah and, I know that was kind of <laughs> like oh we'll have a quick game of this um, but yeah it was my brain just like it's mer <laughs> merging um, so that's the other thing it looks the f the miniatures look fantastic there's a there's a lot of thought gone into it. Greenbrier hats off to them because what they've done with their pilot cars is they've actually used it as a reward tier for the Kickstarter, uh -huh. and they've again kind of said, "Listen, if you want to be part of the game, like Forge War, send us in a picture, and we'll make you as one of the one of the captains. All right. yep. So you can be one of the captains in the game. So there's no days the same. Obviously, there's the things yeah. are different, but you've got a nice kind of set of portraits, and they're all done done really really nice. Oh, that's good. Um, the mech diagram for the mechanoids really kind of quite highly detailed, beautiful looking. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, so it's it's just a single card, you know. So when you buy a huge, weapon, yeah, it's a big card. This mechanoid where you put the steam in so everything. I, like that. I thought maybe from the way you were describing it, you know, you you would put it together with separate no, cards. Or no, something no, no. It's yeah. actually it's already mm -hmm. there and it's starting. The board's about maybe. Um, it's probably it's up to about maybe twenty centimeters by twenty centimeters. Mm -hmm. So it's a big the big the robot the mechanoid card's quite big. Yeah. The game board the game card the the game the board that you actually put the mechanoids on when you're playing yeah. is relatively small. <laughs> okay. Relatively small. So you you enjoyed it then? I really liked it. You really liked I it. I really liked okay. it because it was a bit of a it was a bit of a change from move, fire move fire kind yeah. of thing yeah. Um, yeah. it was a bit of a change yeah. from that The it was the analysis behind it making sure that you ended up having a plan three or four moves mm -hmm. in advance because you could move ahead um, you can move and then obviously that puts you in range of attacking somebody or do you hold your ground so you can then charge up your weapons so you can then yeah. go in and move but obviously if you move and then fire both your weapons at the same time you get into the position where you're lowering your defence because yeah. you're filling your kind of uh, your exhausts basically with too much steam. Yeah. So it's in that case it was it was good fun. Okay. Um it goes for about sixty pounds. Ooh. Ouch. So it is on the way of being the It's on the expensive side. That is on the yeah. expensive side. In terms of kind of maybe as I say, replayability, um it's definitely worth it. You will easily get your sixty pounds worth out of there. Um, f is it quite complicated to learn? Yes, a l it takes a while to get into it. There's a lot mm -hmm. of kind of stopping and referring to the rules yeah. for the first couple of games, just in relation to how damage works, maybe, and mm -hmm. how you're moving the steam about. But once you get going, as I say, you turn a three-hour kind of first game, as you were expected. In the maybe sixty minutes, right? So think. it's it's worth it. Um, would I play it again? Gordon really liked it. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, there wasn't a question when I just, you know, when I ro- rocked up at the club a couple of times to say, "Okay, Gordon, do you want a game of heavy steam?" He's like, "Yep." There was no kind of, you know, he was straight in there, but he he likes that kind of thing. So it's he not likes... Pax Beforia, which <laughs> <laughs> I just cannot get other people to play. Oh, I want oh, man. <laughs> we, should, we, should, we will play that again. I absolutely, I absolutely promise. <laughs> I really liked it, as I said when well, we, we talked we're about. We're gonna it. review it like weeks and uh, uh, well podcast uh, like the second podcast we were going to review it and it's like can't get anyone can't to get anybody to play it <laughs> at all at all um it's all you know we've played these but what are we going to play next time Ooh, what, what are we going to get off the shelf what are you going to get off the shelf what are we going to get off the shelf we need to do we, need, we don't need jingles yet no we're fine as we are no, Stop we, asking we're us for non, jingles. Non jing- yes. We're not the we're not the jingles you're looking we're not the jingles you're looking for. Um There's a a mystery out there on the streets of like of London. Especially around the areas of Whitechapel. Yes. So one of the games that we're gonna get off the shelf is Letters from Whitechapel. Mm-hmm. Because, um, yes, I am. Um, yes, it's, definitely. Uh, um, it's a game we've seen advertised everywhere. It is everywhere. But, um, never picked up a copy of it. No. Um, and then um, one of our, the wonderful, delightful Mr. Leo. Yes. Has yeah. it. He does have it. He so. does have it. So we are going to be talking about Letters from Whitechapel. A game we don't own. <laughs> <laughs> So we're not actually getting it off our own shelf. We're getting it off a Leo's shelf. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. And just a quick thing. Thanks for the eggs, Leo. They were <laughs> lovely. I had them with some bacon and a nice Chianti. Anyway, the other thing we're going to play, it doesn't matter. It's not like he's bacon <laughs> from a person. Where'd you get bacon from a person? In yes. Size. Yeah. Well, long pig, so yeah. Well, I suppose. Yeah, Shall we, we move we, on from we, don't we, look me up and down <laughs> like, you know, I'm some kind of thing for a sandwich. It is um, many days since I have last <laughs> eaten. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, it was about half an hour ago. But um, next thing we're going to do, the industry darling. Now, <laughs> industry darling. It is the industry darling. It's the expensive <laughs> industry darling. Oh, yes. This so. is a person that would they would be they are the Marks and Spencer school yes, yeah, yeah. of the board game of the of the collections of board games out mm. there. Um, it's by Elsra Games. Yep. What is it, Colin? Oh, it's Catacombs. Oh, Catacombs. Oh, Catacombs. Oh, Catacombs. I just go home and hug the box. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's going for two hundred and fifty quid. On, well, it's not. It's five hundred quid on Amazon. Of course, you're going to hug. It's gone up. Of course, you're going to hug the box. <laughs> Hug the box. You'd be taking it about, the, taking it about the town, showing it at the sites so and I've, stuff like I've that. Have to take it out the vacuum seal and we'll actually play it again. Yeah, <laughs> we've got to play it kind of all dressed up and kind of wearing kind of anti-static clothing yes, and stuff like yeah. that to make sure that we don't charge anything or wreck the paper. But yes, we're gonna play. We've we've not talked about it, mm-hmm. but we have had a shifty of catacombs. A long time ago. A long time ago. So we're going to bring it out again and we're going to play I think our last game got cut off a little bit. I think we played something and then we played Catacombs and then I think yep. somebody had to go. Yeah. Um, Stu, Stu, I think, had to go home. Yeah. Stu, always, Stu has to go. No, well, working He's got to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because sometimes we play board games on a school night. Call us crazy. <laughs> um, you know what did he do I played board games until 11 o'clock Woo! whoa <laughs> whoa okay you get to sit at the cool table at lunch do you like some coleslaw is it Marks and Spencer's no it isn't no thanks <laughs> so we're going to be touching on catacombs anyone that doesn't know it it's a dexterity game yep it's a dungeon crawler yep it's about flicking discs yep it's fantastic. It's glorious. It is, and we're going to talk about it in, 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 in better detail. Um, this is the next part, because we're kind of... Are we rushing through? We're not. No, really. no. Well, we're taking no, we're time. fine. We're yeah. fine. Um, giving it a kick. 
Mm-hmm. Now, this is the part of the show... Where you've been spending money. I've not been spending <laughs> any money at all. And when I have a look around, I have a look around the amazing thing that is called Kickstarter, and we talk about a couple of games... And we don't look at up. Indiegogo. Never Indiegogo. I've no actually. I, I've got a confession. I haven't looked at Indiegogo. No, neither have I ever. I I don't know. I, that's not a slight on Indiegogo. No. Obviously, other um, other crowdfunding is available. Yes. Is, <laughs> it's available. Um, as you know. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk about. This I have is, been burnt by Kickstarter. Have you? Yeah, I was... I, I'm still, um, I think, um, yeah, Mantic's still... You're still on a naughty step. <laughs> Don't think we haven't forgotten about you. No, you know, I was... Uh, three I episodes that, and it still um, hurts. It was uh, 3D printer. Oh, and, and no, the one yeah, that's $99. The, yeah, the, 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 the one where they went out and bought a house with the money. Yeah. Did they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? Right. So he's got a really nice house. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good actual, for you. <laughs> actual. You actual... B- I'm going to blank that out because we don't swear. Right, okay, I've got three to go through very, very okay. quickly because we said we would, you know, um, because there's a couple that have picked my, picked my attention. The mm-hmm. first one is called BWNS. It's Pones. Pones. Pones, which Pones is a game of strategic mayhem. Ooh. Now, it's by, a, it's by a company called Arai Games, and it's essentially, um, it's a card game. Mm-hmm. And the idea is to knock out your opponents using the cards, um, using strategies, using um, terrain, and basically battle your way to kind of get yeah, a victory. Right. So you don't physically pick up the cards and no. you know, try no. and so take care of your opponents. A co- no, you... <laughs> <laughs> like shrieking is it shuriken or shrieking well I was going to say gambit but <laughs> <laughs> old gambit new gambit yeah gam- yeah telekinesis is it telekinesis no I just thought it is it yeah, it's, yeah it's, no, I don't know I don't know either it doesn't matter X-Men. so <laughs> basically the object is to knock out just one team from the game so the, then the team that has the most remaining players with the most help with the most health wins oh right okay um so it is you get things like you get your little um pwn they call them pwns you get your cards you get character cards you get little stands you also get like a little kind of uh terrain kind of uh, tile as well so okay it looks kind of quite interesting it the artwork kind of reminds me of a, a mixture of worms and kind of south park i was gonna say the the bino but the Beano. <laughs> yeah. I don't think our American... Or the Dandy. I don't think... Our, they, they won't know what I of these think, things are. No, I don't think the people in America. <laughs> um, what's an American comic? Um, Batman. No. Um, <laughs> let's see. Jughead. It's like... I mean, if you look, oh, no, no. That's as well. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> it is kind of like quite cartoony. But you get things like Dart... You get things like dry grass, which is very flammable. You get fire, you get ice, or you just get a hole. Yeah, they made a song about that, didn't they? They did. I am a mole and I live in a hole. I was meaning more the fire and the ice, but... Right, okay. Is that not a book as well? No, 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 no. I just don't want (laughs) to... You know, I'm on episode two and a half of Game of Thrones. (laughs) That's why I'm I'm on episode two and a half of Game of Thrones. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I've not watched it anymore. Like it. I don't like it. That's all right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're just kind of like, oh, they're fighting. Oh, they're doing something else now. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that Terry, and he's a bit filthy. <laughs> oh, he's got blonde hair now. Oh, he's the pictures I've seen of him lately has got dark hair. Did he run out of peroxide and when... <laughs> <laughs> <Did he? laughs> I want it. I'm, I've got to go to the barbers. Why, Tyrion? Need to get my hair sorted out. Get. It's got the hair as well. Anyway, back to Anywho. this. Uh, Pones, yeah. It's. Um, it looks just like a little bit of fun. Um, it's got 24 oh, days. It's got 20, your eye, so. Yeah, 24 days to go. Um, it's currently. It's got. It's got a total of. Um, it needs target six six thousand dollars, which isn't mm-hmm. high. Yeah. It's not Dark Souls high. No. Um, and it's uh, decent. Almost over three weeks to go. It's it's about um, 
a fifth of the way, almost a fifth of the way through. So, um, and it's uh, it's by a guy called Ryan Boyle. Okay. Um, you can find them. We'll put this in the show notes, but you can, um, you can find them on Twitter under um, Arai Games, I believe. But we'll put it in the show notes as well. Secondly, um, we have got um, Lucky Duck Games have released a game called Vikings Gone Wild. Ooh. Now, um, does Vi- that mean that you know, like they lift up their chain mail and then? They do that. <laughs> they go about going, "Oh look, I am drunk in the street. What do you want to do?" No, that's that's wrong. Well, they're, they're, they're not Russian Vikings. It's, it's all good. <laughs> you get Russian Vikings. I don't know how to do a Viking On voice. Miami Beach. Do I, a Vi- I, I, do a Viking I, voice then. I, 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 I will be not doing this betray my, my, right. my cultural heritage. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cultural heritage. My <laughs> my left butt cheek. Um, <laughs> Vikings gone wild. Um, is essentially it is a it's like a card it's a card game it's uh, you basically take the role of heads of clans fighting each other to prove prove to the gods who's the best oh right That's it's nice. religion it's <laughs> one up it's so everything you, bas- you want you basically gain you gain victory points by attacking other players defending um, upgrading your town hall or even mm-hmm. complete missions so the game ends once a player reaches um, 40 or 30 victory points, depending on the number of players, but you get 24 bon- bonus points added on at the end, so that decides the kind of the final winner. Oh, okay. So you play your cards in your hand to buy units or defence towers, erect buildings, yep. cells, and you attack other players. So mm-hmm. you've got to find the right between, obviously, it's a case of do I invest in resources yeah. or do I go out and grow my army? So um, you get mats, you get deck cards, there's unit cards, defence cards, building cards, path cards, town hall cards, bonus cards, birthday cards. Yeah. There's no birthday cards. There's no birthday cards. But um, it's doing quite well. Ah, jolly good. It's doing quite well. It's got about 11 days to go. Is it? Is it serious or is it... It looks you know, pretty it serious. Uh, you know, the, the oh, it's of... a kind of a jokey kind right. of, ah, you know, okay. it's not a kind of a serious kind of miniature. It's not blood rage or anything right. like that. Right, so it's I not we're going to come to your village, burn it to the ground, <laughs> kill all the men folk. And... Village. Yeah, yes. okay, yes. All right. It's, it's... It's, it has done very well. 11 days to go, it had a target of $7,000, uh-huh. and it has done... Ten times oh, no. that, so it's done seventy five thousand dollars. So, so the people running that Kickstarter are like, "Yay! Oh, yay! Yeah, oh. I know. Oh no, we've got to. Oh, they're kind of just invented stretch goals now. We'll give everybody a Viking helmet. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? We're going to give everybody beer. So yeah, and it's um no, um, it's only f- I think it's like fifty dollars a a shot. Right. So that's not. So that's forty five ish here. Mm, less than that, 36, but 36 <laughs> actually. Yeah, so that is Lucky Duck Games, Vikings Gone Wild, so it's worthwhile kind of taking taking a look. The last one, which I'm, and I only shouted this in because um, this is, um, I kind of respect these two guys that are producing this next game, um, because I've got already one of their games already. It's a game called Heroes and Tricks. It's by a man called Eduardo Barath. Now, okay. I've already backed a project that he did called Lift Off, Get Me Off This Planet, mm-hmm. which we've not played. We've not because, played. But I've played it with my boy, and it's really, really good fun. Ah, okay. So, um, basically, Heroes and Tricks is... It's pretty much like... It's like winning tricks in a game. It's basically oh, right. yeah. so it's a card game, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's basically right. a card game. Okay. Yeah. So it's you know, the blur behind is no matter no matter race, creed, gender or empire, each child of game door is born with an affinity to one of the four suits. Card, meeple, dice or token. In love and war these suits are absolutely meaningless, but in the game, well, they mean everything. So essentially the the idea is you build up um you play play cards from your hand you build mm-hmm. up tricks you you win and you do it to to become like the the best hero as it says to be the player to win the most tricks therefore having the most heroes in the game 
Each trick is led by a hero card that defines the target suit and colour, dramatically changing the playing dynamic of the typical trick-taking games. Um, it's kind, it's unusual. It's they say they've developed kind of like a unique kind of they say it's a magnetic box, uh-huh. so you can play it any time. I like that because mm-hmm. we played Vault Wars recently, and that uh-huh. was sealed. Yeah. magnetic box at the well, top. I so what can, they mean. But the idea is that you actually have a, a proper game box which plays an integral part of the game. So what you oh, do is when you okay. play, you put, you basically, you get a hand of cards and then the hero card's placed into the box and the first player can see its colour and suit through the window. Then that player plays a card over the top of it and they try and match either the colour or the suit. Then pass the box to the next player, so they only see the last card the player played. Once the mm. players have played a card, the trick is revealed. The player who matches colour and suit the biggest, highest number wins. Oh, so it's got a bit of bluffing in there and everything. Yes, you oh, like okay. that. Yeah, you yeah like I that. do like bluffing games. Yeah, because remember, yeah, you like Vault Wars, which was the last one we played. Yeah, that's a bit I, of I, 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 I did like that, I think. You did? I was a wee bit on the fence with that um, yeah. the first time we played it because yeah. Gordon just destroyed us. Oh, he did, totally. He must have went Lordy. He went away and read the news <laughs> by himself or something like that. Um, yes, it's um, Eduardo Baraf. I know that um, John Gilmore's had a hand in it. Shaboy. Gilmore. He did, he, did, he did Dead of Winter. Oh, yes. It's the Dead of Winter mention in the show. <laughs> we're going to get a jingle for that. No, we're not. Yes, we are. No. Um, I'll, I'll check Twitter. They've got... <laughs> six, no, Twitter says no, man. They've got 16 days left. Um, they're just under their funding target of about 8,500. Um, and they've done about seven eight. So... Um, those are the three that we, well, I think, have a look. We're not telling you to buy them. We're not wizards. We're not endorsing any of these games and saying nope. that you should go and get them. Um, so unfortunately, some of the games we've pa- well, we've talked about in the past haven't met their target. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's no endorsement. You know, have a look, check them out, and as we say, yeah, check out what they've done. beware with Kickstarter. Check out what they've done in the past. Check out their website. Check out their Twitter. You know, make sure you're happy before you stick your money down. You know, yep. um, I know some of the bigger companies have started offering kind of refunds as well. Um, oh, yeah, I know that um, the guys that did the Dark Souls game, uh-huh. they're saying, oh, um, yeah, we're quite happy to to refund people their money. Because I think some people have gone in and went all out. Yeah. Because we did a total. Um, well, it's a total. And then found out they. Well, hang on. I hate Dark Souls. Well, why no, have I spent three hundred pounds on this? No, I think a lot of folk kind of went. Oh, I mm. love Dark Souls, but I'll buy everything. I've realised, yeah. unfortunately, that uh, you know, I think to buy everything was about th- over three hundred quid. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think we, you know, obviously, as we've maybe said before. Um, so that's nice, right? That's Foley for you. That's Well, it's not Foley. It's me again turning the page because we're on the <laughs> second page of notes. Um, let's... Should we do... Let's do... Do you want to do questions first? No, we can. Do yeah, we can. let's do yeah. questions first because yeah. I'm just going to check because this is... La- I, I, I asked earlier on the good people if we did have questions and I'm just going to check now if there are any questions kind of out there. Um... Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, we've had um, we um, wavy wavy gravy um, has I stuck a picture out of um, Whitechapel, mm-hmm. and he says, "Oh, that looks interesting." Um, and then he says, "Oh, looks complicated." <laughs> it is not. not. Complicated. And we'll talk about it in the next yes. pod, which cast, which I said we would. Um, so they're going to take mm. a look. Stuart Cullen, um, friend of the show, Fury AC3. He's a big Halo boy. He uh-huh. loves his Halo. Yep. In fact, in my other thing, I drew him as Master Chief oh. from Halo. So hi, Stu. Hope you're doing well. Um, good to hear you. Um, 
He's saying Halo Fleet Battles and the new Ground Assaults game. Or I think it's called Ground Command. Mm-hmm. How easy is it going to be for first timers and where would you start? Um, I think... I have to admit, I don't know anything about uh, Ground Wars. I have seen a review. I, I, I don't have Halo Fleet Battles. Um, but I know the company that's made the game and I've played some of their other games uh, Uncharted Seas and um, oh I can't remember their sort of weird first world war game that they've also got is it bolt action? no <clears throat> no it's like um, no um, it's like uh, steampunk world war 2 uh, oh, right, world war 1 okay. game Oh right. Um, Is that they're called Spartan games? Yeah. So we can have a we can have a quick <clears> look. Um, I have played some of those games and they are very easy to pick up. I would imagine that Halo Fleet Wars would be fairly easy for someone that's never played a game to pick up. But it is a miniature war game. It isn't a board game. Yes. Um, so you will so be. You wouldn't have a play mat. You you would be. Yeah. For, you know, like if a, you came to the club, you mm. would be you would be what we called playing in the other room. Yes, basically. The scrub and that's <laughs> that's that's not any kind of um, that's not kind of any um, kind of insult or anything. There is two rooms at the club that we go yeah. to, <laughs> and we play in the one room, and then the guys that are playing the, the miniatures the games, games yeah. they play in the other room. Um, I guess add only the only thing I can add to that is. Um, obviously read some reviews these games are good but it, uh, I guess it depends on the the amount of money that you're willing to spend on them as well yeah no um, from what I've heard of Fleet Wars when you buy it it comes with the two fleets that you would need to play the game yes um, the 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 UN fleet for, for the humans and uh, what are they called the purple ones the purple ones <laughs> We're insulting him because he's no, a big no, no, He's no, going to no. be shouting the convent, down the positive. Convent troops. The Covenant. Yes, you that's stu- it. It's not that. It's also the Flood as well. You know nothing. The Flood. No, no, no the, the, I don't think the Flood are in the. Oh, it's just the Covenant. The war game. Yeah, it's All right. Just okay. Okay. The UNV, the Covenant. I think with anything, mm. check check out a couple of reviews because it can yeah. be, um, with the games like the X Wing games, there's a temptation to be like a kid in a sweet shop and go out and buy the core game and automatically kind of go out and buy the expansions mm. um, just for the models you know just like um, people have done with X-Wing people have done with Star Wars Armada and, and people you know um, get the core game check out and see if you like it and also check out and see if anybody else is going to be willing to play with you as well because yep. that is a really important thing because um, these are going to take a little bit it takes can take a little bit of time to play normally the guys at the club the club usually runs for three hours yeah. and these guys are usually starting at six and finishing it at nine, at nine yeah. so that you know it does take a little bit of time um they both looking at them just now they both look you know you know decent decent enough games and um, they'll obviously there'll be forums out there you can check but um the spartan war games are, are normally quite easy to pick up yeah but you have to be wanting to pick up a, a, a war game if yeah. if you're maybe looking for a board game it might not be your thing yeah I mean the, yeah mm. um, the, I, I don't know if there's a Halo I don't think there's a Halo board game um, yet I believe there was no, talk I, about it I, um, I can't think of one off of the top of my head no okay cool cool okay our, um, so thank you very much for that um, for that question Stuart I hope we, we answered it for you our um our next um, questions questions <laughs> questions come from <laughs> um, Mr. Leo. Okay, <laughs> and he's he's just like he's obviously heard that we're gonna be doing this. <laughs> he's, he's stored so them he's, up. he's like, he's. I'll read it out because it's quite. He says it's it's a questions from an anonymous listener. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> we've blown his anonymity. Oh well, <laughs> doxed him. Um, <laughs> oh God. Um, where am I? Was his first question. Well, you're probably <laughs> in your house. We we're not going to give out the address. No, no, no we're not. Um, 
He says, you didn't like that um, rubbish box that Kickstarter sent you <laughs> because it couldn't hold all the stretch goals. What are your top arbitrary number boxes? <laughs> um, for me, in terms of box space and organisation, mm -hmm. Small World. Small World, okay. Small World had a lovely, beautiful tray for all the counters that you could actually yeah. remove the tray with a plastic top mm -hmm. to allow you to, to kind of facilitate yeah. the use of the counters. So that was very, very good to use. Um, heavy Steam uh -huh. has nice little compartments for all the kind of the little um, yeah. the little mechanoids, robots, I'll think of a proper name to call them <laughs> at some point. Um, so that was kind of good. Um, and obviously anything by Fantasy Flight because oh. their boxes are just absolutely fantastic. I've, Brilliant, yeah. I, you know, no problems with that. I, every time I open a Fantasy Flight box, I'm reminded of Star Wars. My, my board game or World of, War of, One of Starcraft board game isn't smashed to bits because of, of, <laughs> of Fantasy Flight. Because give us an entry. A box. There's yeah. not an entire entry industry. <laughs> I would say. What about yourself? A couple games. Um, the Mysterium box seemed really well put together. Yes. Um, that was nice. Yeah. But I don't like Mysterium, no, apparently. You, you Leo, I it. do like Mysterium. No, I know you that... don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Love of God, you detested that game. You're like, no, I didn't. Ruff, 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 ruff. All the way through playing. No, that wasn't um, true. Anyway. Um, you give me your a game. Uh, Taj Mahal was a very good game. Uh, we've already talked about the deluxe pixel tactics, which, which is, is a box and a half. Armored fortress of a of, which of a is box. a box and a half. Um, the a game I've played a lot, which is um, Sentinels of the Multiverse, oh. has a very lovely box as well. Oh, okay. It's very like the pixel tactics box of. Because um, the size of it's it. a, a card based game as well. Yeah. And it does that same, gives you all the dividers and everything so you can put That's all the expansions cool. in, in the main box. Cool. Okay. Um, his next question When you're buying hundreds, I'm just reading these out, so I'm not going to look at them before. <laughs> when you're buying hundreds of wee Ziploc baggies for your meeples, <laughs> do you think people think you're a drug dealer? <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's that's how we actually um, do our selling is well, by going to the board that's game how we club. Afford, afford our that's habits, how we, have, that's how we yeah. afford our, our. You know, that's <laughs> the fifth episode is coming to you, care of Meeple Meth, <laughs> <laughs> card game crack, yeah. <laughs> basically, which is meth, meth in the shape of meeples that you can stick in little bags wow, and you can is, just give is, to is, people. Is, is that our call sign? You know, like. like <laughs> Break, breaking Bad. Breaking Bad has the blue meth. We've got the meth. We've meeple got the meeple meth. meth. Well, they can use it before they snort it, I guess. Or oh, fit into your teeth slot better. Yeah. Yes. So it's, we're thinking of our customers. Um, the answer is no. Um, probably not. I don't dress. I don't know. I don't. I don't try and come across as a drug dealer. Well, I, I'm I'm going into little shops in 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 little villages, and and they do kind of stare at you. Going, do they? Yeah. Yeah. You get that. I get followed about by the store detective in Marks and Spencers because I keep eyeing up the cold slow. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's his next one? Why are you recording this episode of the podcast dressed up as wizards? Why are you standing outside looking in our window? <laughs> well, I always record naked, so I don't get that. Don't. <laughs> don't get off our couch. <laughs> Get off our couch! Oh, oh, oh! We've just had a we've had a mad quick question in, which we'll we'll do soon. Okay, have you learned something from playing board games that you have applied to real life? E.g., how to plan a strategy as the head of a large German utility <laughs> company. <laughs> of a, I'll read that out. How to plan the strategy as the head of a large German utility company? Well, I am pleased to announce that my um my vice presidency. <laughs> <laughs> has just been, you know, has just been offered through the point four, um, for Scottish Gas. Um, well, I, I, I tried it at work, but I, I found people got annoyed standing in in numbered squares. Um, <laughs> who'd have think it? But 
I oh. don't know. <laughs> I think I think when people were asking for what I thought about the latest business plan, trying to pay them in I, small wooden cubes didn't work well either. Well, it's when I, which is which is when I I went up to the the whiteboard at work and I drew a picture of a diver underwater with two anubises <laughs> anubises on either side and a small a clockwork a small clockwork mouse at the front. I said, guys, that's what I think of your business plan. Well, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what they thought? They thought it was the night. <laughs> they thought it was the night with the scissors. Oh, that yes. done the murder. Yeah, yeah. That's what they thought. Um, so the answer is, mate, Leo, I, the reason that this podcast Mr. exists. Mr. Anonymous. <laughs> Mr. Anonymous. The reason that this podcast exists was because I went in and told them at work that I play board games. Uh, and so that was where We Are Not Wizards came around. Um, oh, you're not going to believe this, but we've had a final, a oh. f- final, look at that. Oh, okay. So I'm going to show this to the camera so people can see it as well. Yes, yes. Um, Who's watching them? <laughs> oh, let me just see. Op- opinions of Final Fantasy Star Wars Armada Wave 3 and 4 releases underwhelming the best they could do the license um i'll be honest with you i'm gonna have a quick look because i haven't seen um armada wave three and four i think i've seen some things from three and was a wee bit mer, but um i've not seen anything from wave four let's see armada wave three armada wave oh here we go let's have a quick look live oh Okay. What are you getting? You are getting mini 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 line upon line of text. Flotillas. Enters an all too new type of ship. Flotillas. The Imperial Assault Carriers expansion pack. So you're getting carriers, and it looks like you're getting some rebel transports as well. Um. Oh, look. <laughs> He's liked it. Oh, well. Um, mm, yeah. I'd have to go underwhelming, really. Um, yeah, I'm just going to see if they have actually released anything about Wave 4 as well. Um, it's from, actually, incredibly yeah, I was, I was ignorant a from game. me. <laughs> um, is that I didn't mention who the tweet is from. It's from um, it's from Dwarf. Yes. Our, our, our glorious Who club. are the Dunfermline Warhammer and Role Playing Fellowship? Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. Brilliant, fantastic. Um, the fourth wave looks like. Uh, let me just scroll down. The Interdictor. Okay. That's looks ooh. at ooh actually. That's yeah, cool. actually, that mm. looks good. So oh, I like Wave, wave that, 4 yeah. looks good. Kinda... I have no idea how it plays. The Liberty expansion pack is one of the capital ships that was in Jedi. Ah. So that looks okay. It's just like Home 1, apparently. It's a large base ship with eight hull. It's almost like you're reading that out. It's almost like I am reading <laughs> it out from the Final Fantasy It's a Trap thing. Ooh, he's liked it again. <laughs> So I would have to look it up. I haven't played in Madam myself. Uh, we're gonna we can put that on so the list at some point. It will be Richard's opinion. It will be. I would say um, I really really like Armada. Um, wave three does look kind of disappointing. Wave four, however, hmm, that could be quite interesting. Um, could they do more things with the intellectual property? I'm going to be controversial and say I think they should slow down on releasing waves. Because you get to the point where you're entering X-Wing territory where you just release anything in order to put a price on it. Hmm. And an X-Wing, in my opinion, has got to the point where there's a lot of just random stuff kind of coming out. So I um, just want a game of Wings of War, yeah. which is what X-Wing's based oh, on. Oh, here we go. And we've got another one that's all... Vore Graham's long-time listener, first-time caller. Hello, <laughs> hello Graham. What games, what about games do you find that piques your interests? Um, do you know what? I like the social aspect of it. I like the fact that you get to play different games with different people. And I find that as video games, 
as video games kind of go, um, they seem to be removing the kind of there's very few kind of sit on the couch together type games and be able to mm. play. There's mm -hmm. very few couch co-op games you can do, and it seems to be pushing towards kind of like the the online side of it. Um, I would have to say. <coughs> um, And, and theme plays a big part of, of, of what I pick up and buy. That's yeah. why I got commanding colours because I love Napoleonics. Um, you, you're still you're crazy daft for you play it all the time. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if I when in fact when I was playing, um, when I've when when we've been playing like got involved in a bigger game. Yeah. Um. Then you've often been playing Napoleonics. Yep. Which is kind of um, cool. Uh, I, so I, I would say theme. Um, I'm quite a Euro gamer, so the actual game doesn't have to be too beautiful for me to want to pick it up and play it. Mm. Um, for me, um, it's I. Um, you do I'm, like pretty games. I do like pretty <laughs> games. I like. Do you know what I like? I like a game where somebody's taking the care and attention. I also, um, yeah. I also, but I am kind of getting to the thing where I'm, I'm, I'm interested in kind of trying slightly different games, mm -hmm. and I think the best surprises come in a game that, um, you have to, th it stops, it kind of challenges you being, giving your preconceptions about a game, yeah. because board games can be so different and be so vast, whereas, and and what this is why I'm more, I'm becoming more of a board game player than a video game player, because I feel we're almost at the point where it's not a case there's not lots of ideas with video games, it's just that a lot of the big AAA stuff, they aren't really wanting to, to basically take a risk no. on new ideas and stuff like that. You get um, you get kind of things kind of <laughs> rolled out. If you heard that, that was um, my littlest boy has got one of these crazy bouncy balls and Colin thought it would be a good idea to see how close to the mic <laughs> he could he could get it or drop it without playing it. Um, yeah, so thank you, Board Grahams, for that. Board Grahams, um, he's got his own little uh, YouTube channel, so Ooh. check it out. I've mentioned it before. Um, where are we? Right. couple of things just want to... Um, and that's our questions. Thank you, people. That's not Nick. Where's Nick? Nick, where's your questions, mate? You usually, <laughs> you usually ask. And... Uh, Nick, I'll put uh, Nick says yes, because he always says that. Um, couple of shout outs um, because we like. If you like us, you might like these other people as well. Um, Mass Movie Side UK, Trevor and Barry. <laughs> it's not because they keep forgetting to put Colin's name in. Yeah. Oh. They say it's we need Richard and name. we can't remember. So you kind of. Oh. I know. I've told them. I text Trevor all the time and tell him what it is. So, Mass well, Movie Side UK. They have a. a, a Don't listen to them. About, Just, um, about, about TV programs, obviously. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's yeah. Trevor and Sandra and Barry from Mass Movie Side UK. <laughs> um, if you like your films but you like them a bit sweary, well, if you don't mind the commentary being sweary about them. Go and check out Films and Swearing with Stu and Andy, who's always good fun. So is that about films and swearing? So it's felt they talk about films, so they talk but about, they swear. Oh, ah, right. Um, personal favourite of mine, Staying In Podcast. Mm -hmm. They're these. They're just. They're very very good at what they do. They talk a little bit geeky. Um, um I'm not going to plug them too much because they're they're so very good. General banter. General banter is top. Um, lapsed Gamer Radio, Mark Seven Lee, uh, help helping gamers to get back into the habit, which nice. is good. Behind the barricade, hey, hey. it's the New Jersey boys, hey. Oh, it's those chaps. Yeah, it's those chaps. I'm, I'm walking pot in here. I'm walking here. I'm walking here. I'm button here. I'm John in here. I'm Den in here. I'm interview. Oh, I'm run, run out of steam. With my New Jersey stuff. Anyway, when it's... you eat a pizza, you do pizza. You don't eat <laughs> pie. Pie is a completely different thing. <laughs> Just no, stop it. You're setting them off. Anyway, John and Dan, how you doing? How you doing? Um, just a quick sign. And obviously, our twin humanities boys, 
Paddy and CJ, who um, are fantastic and are wonderful, and we well, like a lot of what they, they do. Are they two chaps doing a podcast as well? Yes, they That's are, cool. but they don't do it about board games. Ah, good, good. They do it about humanities. <laughs> It's kind of like that. <laughs> they do it about Dark Souls, but oh, they also okay. they've got two podcasts. They've got all the humanities as well, oh. which they talk about geek stuff, ah. and they have some usually have some fantastic guests as well. Mm-hmm. Um, they had recently a guy from who plays Dark Souls called I Love Jessica Biel. It's worth a listen. It's bloody hilarious. But anyway, um, one last plug. I um, a couple of days ago I went on to the Dark Insight podcast um, as a guest. Um, partly as from We Are Not Wizards, so I spoke about board games, and partly as my normal Twitter handle person. Um, I joined uh, Vader Van Oden and also Jeremy um, as well, had a, a fantastic time, ended up clocking in almost two hours of chat. Ooh. Can you imagine me for two hours? Yeah, don't. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you can find them on uh, darkinsight.net, you can find them on Twitter at um, Dark Insight Pod. Um, worthwhile, it's episode 22. They actually called it Scottish Insight <laughs> after me. So um, I had a blast. It's well, well worth, um, it's worth, they're well worth listening to. Um, listen to 21 and the numbers below. Don't listen to me. Yeah. Yeah, because you probably had enough of me. Um, the only other thing we've got to say is we've got an interview special coming up. We're trying to do something, not different, but we're trying to slot in maybe a little bit of additional content. So mm-hmm. um, over the piece I was talking, after his successful um, Kickstarter campaign, I was speaking to Jeffrey Greer mm-hmm. um, from Past Go Games. So um, we're, we're going to... Um, we kind of had a chat, recorded our words... Um, asked some questions, got some good answers. He's a good lad, he's a good chap. Um, and so over the next week, I'm um, going to be potentially posting that up next two weeks Excellent. when there's a little bit of a lull. Um, again, once again, it's about that time. <laughs> so if you um, if you want to talk to us, if you want to listen to us more, if you'd like to rate us, um, we like a chat. Um, f- you know, feel free to um, go to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash we are not wizards. Um, go to Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash we are not wizards. Um, you can find us on iTunes, which I don't know, still don't know what that is. It's still <laughs> numbers and stuff. Um, you can check us out on Stitcher. Um, yeah, ping us a message like these good people live question answering. <laughs> You don't get much better than that. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, I have been Richard. And I've been Cole. And uh, remember that um, we are many things, but we're... We're not wizards. We're not wizards. <laughs> oh. Who say bye-bye then? Guten Tag. Bye! We're not doing the bye-bye song, are we? No. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. <laughs>